Hi everyone, my name is Mikhail Kosko Rasmussen and I'm working as an agro journalist here at EBG, covering Danish IT and tech companies. And today I have the pleasure of welcoming Pineo, represented by the CEO, Christian Stenevel. So uh, Christian, I think you can go ahead with your presentation if, uh, presentation if you're ready. Yes, thank you very much and thank you for this opportunity to present Pineo. So we are software as a service uh, growth case and I'm happy to give you an introduction both to our offerings but also to the market and the business model and some key SaaS metrics and also the future growth potential in Europe. But uh, let's start with some uh, history. So if you take the next slide. So in uh, 2014, Pineo was founded by a group of entrepreneurs who saw the opportunity in the new electronic ID that had been launched a few years earlier here in Denmark. And the solution, the Pineo solutions was developed in close collaboration with several of the major auditor firms to automate and optimize their manual workflows towards their client. And the motto back then was kill the pen with a digital alternative. Pineo has since then expanded with a solution for KYC that is also known as Know Your Customer that helps companies comply with the anti-money laundering regulation. Today, we are 120 employees and over 2,700 customers in Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Belgium. And as a fun fact, 81% of all our all annual reports in Denmark in 2022 were signed with Pineo. So quite a large penetration. And then the picture that we started off with was from when we moved to main market Nasdaq Copenhagen that we did in 2022. If we Take the next slide, then we can see some of the uh, key customer pains that we address with our solution, boiled down to the, its essence, we streamline workflows, and then we enhance efficiency, cut cost, and we help our customer, such as auditing accounting customer, achieve legal compliance, and improve the experience they are able to offer to their clients. And traditionally, many of these workflows uh, are manual and inconsistent, and they are often leading to a time-consuming and unsustainable practices with a lot of errors and unnecessary expenses. So implementing our digital signing, but also automation of processes like the Know Your Customers or the anti-money laundering risk assessments that are mandatory to do, yeah, that can result in substantial productivity gains. And this is exactly what we help our customer achieve. If you would take the next slide, then uh, some of the growth driver uh, that we're looking into. So in a broader perspective, Pineo is a well positioned to support the whole digital transformation that is picking up speed right now across Europe. In large part of Europe, they are not as advanced in their digitalization as we are here in the Nordics. And this is especially true within our focus industries, such as the auditing accounting. They have traditionally been very conservative and slow to digitalize. And in general, we believe that they can learn a lot from the experience that we have here from the Nordics. And moreover, the KYC legislation is tightened significantly in these years and companies are exposed to more control. So having control over the KYC process has simply become a license to operate. For example, if an auditor has not conducted a comprehensive onboarding of their customers with all the know your customer checks and risk assessments, they are simply not allowed to commence their work. And this graphs some, some of these growth that we can see over the coming years. So if you take uh, the next slide, that's a little bit about our all go to market approach. So when we go into uh, a new market, and that's based on the experience that we've had first from Denmark and then later also when we entered Norway and Sweden and also Belgium. Our all go-to-market approach is we always start with the auditing accounting and get a good penetration uh, into that segment and automate their processes. And then later on, then we go to what we call our tier two customers. There are other industries uh, that are regulated by the anti-money laundering uh, regulation. There can be lawyers, uh, financial institute, and others. And then what we have also experienced over the time is when, for example, auditor and accounting are sending out their the annual report uh, for, sig uh, for signatures, uh, then 
who is it that is signing? Yeah, that's a CEO and board members in the different uh, companies. And there we have seen a network effect of those industries and customers for those industries, then are then coming to us and ask and say, okay, that solution that you're providing, we can also take similar advantage and automate our processes. So we have seen say, from inbound, you know, a lot of inbound come, uh, leads coming in, translate into business. So that's our overall go-to-market approach that we are using. If you take the next slide, then a little bit about our growth journey. So we were founded in 2014, and this is our overview of the growth journey that we have been since our founding. We started up with some seed capital, and then for the first five years, we were bootstrapped, meaning we were profitable uh, every year. And those during those five years, uh, that's where we created the solution together with, with uh, our key customers, and then we expanded initially to, uh, to Norway and Sweden. And there we could see the metrics, uh, that how we have performed. And then we said, OK, we can grow our company further by, uh, by investing in growth. So we seek uh, some, seed, uh, some, uh, some uh, growth capital. And then we went IPO in 2020 and raised uh, 50 million Danish kroner. And uh, after, after um, two years, we could see that we were still performing. And we could see a lot of good results and a good SAS metrics of further growth that I will come back to. And then we raised additional capital in, in, uh, in 2022 when we went on the main market, NASDAQ, uh, Copenhagen. And continuing into 2023, and I'll come back to some of those numbers. How we are looking at it is the, that capital is invested in growth in our product. Uh, development for further products uh, and also in sales and marketing. And um, at the same time, we never run out of cash. So we are investing because it gives some good metrics that I'll come back to. But as you can see here from the cash curve, we never run out of cash. So we have the ability to become uh, cash positive and be profitable, meaning that our ARR and our revenue is above our cost. So we can basically in the get profitable and, and, and create cash after that moment. We have that ability based on our current investment plan. And what are those SAS metrics? Let's go into the next slide. So this is one of the core slides that we have showing our business. This shows our customer cohorts. And cohorts is a group of customers that we have acquired in one specific financial years from the very beginning. And how each of these cohorts have evolved over time and gradually contributed with more and more ARR in all the in their subsequent years. And what we can see is that customers who come on board on average purchase more each year with a, with a, very few actually that are leaving us. And that happens for every cohort year after year. And as a result, we have a growing revenue stemming from both new customers entering and existing, uh, existing customers that are buying more. And also what is important to note in this regard is that we have demonstrated this ability since our founding. Also to check the things about this type of business model is that at the start of the year, we have already secured a significant portion of the revenue we achieved the previous year. If we then go into the next diagram, that shows our annual recurring revenue and ARR development over the last 12 months. And this is a result of our equal focus on growth, both from existing customers, but as well also on new customers and our focus on growing both our Pineo Sign solution and our KYC solution. And it shows some of our key metrics uh, that we are delivering. So if you observe here from the left to right, uh, you can see that you can how we were here, that's from our latest Q3 report. You can say a year back, uh, we were at 65 million. And then you can see that we have a decrease of 4% in our ARR due to customer churn. And that is consistent with the 4% we are being on two, three, 4% for the last many years. And we have also achieved a solid uplift of 80% from sales to existing customer. And these two numbers together result in a net retention rate of 114. And meanwhile, we also got ARR from new customers 
and also made a significant contribution leading to a 13% increase in ARR. So in total over the last 12 months, this has led to a year year growth of 27% in our annual recurring revenue. And a year to date, we have reached an ARR of 82.5 million Danish kroner, which corresponds to approximately 130 million Swedish kroner. And this split between uplift to existing customer, low churn, and then also acquiring the new customers, we have performed consistently over the last years. If we take the next slide, that slide showing why are we investing? So why will we raise capital and why are we investing in the customer and why does that make sense? We believe it's very attractive for us to invest in growth. Acquiring a new customer, of course, come with some costs but we build up front for a year. So when we send the second invoice after a year, we have covered the cost acquiring a new customer. And this is what we refer to as the customer acquisition cost or in short CAC or CAC. And what we see is that over five years, we have generated seven times the CAC. In other words, if we have the funds, investing in growth is actually a very profitable business because after all, a 1 million Danish kroner investment in year one yields 7 million over five years. Two years ago, we didn't spend so much time explaining this business model, but today, however, during our investors call, we often face this question, why are you not profitable? But the answer is that we could achieve profitable, uh, we're going to achieve a profitability tomorrow if we wanted to, but it makes more sense for us to invest in growth, both in sales and, and in product development when we show these kind of metrics. Let's go into the strategy by taking the next uh, slide. An important part of our strategy is European uh, expansion. And this is why uh, the reason why I've chosen to show this slide. This slide shows you know, the, our, our, the uh, part of our AR that comes from our domestic market which is Denmark, and foreign market, which is outside of Denmark, and that is why now Norway with around 50%, Sweden with approximately 25%, and Belgium with approximately 25 There's a few other markets too, but these are the main markets. 63% of all our new ARR originate from foreign market at the end of Q3 2023, and our foreign market grew by 28 year on year. And that's part of our strategy that also going forward that we will tap into the great potential in Europe. Uh, we will focus on expanding further. And if you take the next slide, then I'll show a little bit about you know, how that looks like. Belgium is a very good example where we have a lot of, we see a lot of traction right now uh, with some, some good result. And so this shows the revenue uh, since the very first customer and until uh, the end of uh, Q3 uh, this year. At the beginning, when we enter a, a, a country like Belgium, yeah, when we start up getting the first pilot customers on board, where we co-create the specific, uh, that are the specific uh, for the Belgium market. And so every market has some specific things, then we co-create that together with the customers. And then what we saw after a year, then we saw the picking up, getting more and more customers on board, and then we were completely ready with our integrations, uh, key integration to their target systems in the auditing and accounting segment. Uh, and then we start picking up uh, and getting more and more on board. And then we establish a local team uh, with our, our sales manager and then a team around it. And then it had grown uh, quarter by quarter uh, quite substantially. So if we compare Q3, uh, end of Q3 this year, we grew 333% compared to a year ago. And we got a lot of new customers on board in Belgium. But that is based on the initial launch, integration, be ready, and then when it's ready, then to push uh, fully uh, forward. And that also ties into uh, similar the way we are also going to expand further with our plans. So right now, there's a lot of momentum in Belgium, and we put even more resources into it to secure, secure that we continue this momentum. But we also have plan of further expansion. And if you take uh, the next slide, then basically right now we are looking into Germany as the next possible market opportunity. And we have this charge slow, it's the similar ARR model. And basically what we'd like to do is to copy 
all the experiences that we have had, both from the Nordic country, uh, where we have been now for, for many years, but also what we have done in, in Belgium, and then do it. What we would like to achieve is to be and start and be established in the market when it starts to pick up. So a country like Germany is not as digitalized as we've seen in a Nordic country. So it is to be ready when they are ready and then start pick up. We believe they are ready uh, and soon start to pick up. So that's the reason why we have chosen right now to dive into uh, the Germany as a market. We have had our preliminary investigation and we are part of the workshop with our pilots, uh, customers, uh, and then we also start adapting our solution to the local market and be ready. And then the plan is, to get up, pick up the first pilot customers and then uh, learn from that and then make a similar growth path. And that's the way we do it now with Germany. And there's also the way we investigate in this further ahead, simply to tap into what we see as a great potential uh, that we have in Europe right now. So that's basically my final slide. We see Pineo on a very exciting journey, uh, shown some strong SAS metrics. And that's what we also see, looking ahead, what we expect to continue to see. So handing over to you, Miguel, if you have some questions for us. Yeah, I definitely have. Uh, I think we could uh, start off the Q&A session with where you already left, uh, Germany, namely. Uh, I remember from following you throughout the year that you've actually been saying that we expect to, to enter Germany throughout or during the course of 2023. But then it, it feels like you have changed your communication a bit here uh, lately. Is that correctly understood? I mean, are you cutting back on costs uh, due to some factors that, I mean, maybe you could talk about those factors or, or how should we read into this? Yes, so uh, so what we have said from the very beginning, if you look up, is that what we will do is we expect to enter Germany so we have that final decided because that was exactly based on this investigation and then uh, these initial uh, in dialogue, both with customers, but also authorities to be ready at the same, at the time when they are ready as a market. Many have warned on say, okay, Germany, that's a big, big market with a lot of opportunities, but they are not as advanced in the digitalization as the other market, but we believe they will be. So they have done it cautiously, just as we did also when we entered Belgium. So originally, when we started up the year, we said we will enter Belgium and we will enter uh, Germany. That's our expectation, but don't estimate any revenue from Germany. And that's also where we are. We have done a lot of invest investigations. We have had a lot of these target talks. We are preparing our product for it. Uh, and, and now we, that will continue also into 2024. We have not come up with any guidance and, and expectations for 2024 yet, but we are there where we would like to be. At the same time, when we also see a lot of good momentum in some of the other markets like Belgium, we also put full force on that. So when we distribute our resources, we also put it where we have most success and the highest growth. Yeah, no, that's very interesting because coming back to one of your slides where, it, where you know, it, it's very clear that it makes sense to invest heavily into the customers now to, to gain the, you know, get the, the best long-term uh, benefit out of them. But um, you have, or you, at your Q3 earnings call, you indicated that we should expect fewer hirings going forward. Uh, is that mainly due to uh, a matter of preserving the cash position or to slow it? Or is it, I mean, aren't you suffering on the long term here due to, say, uh, cash constraints? Or? If you're stopping, so what we what we leave, what we do with our two things we do, we invest in new customers uh, and then uh, we never run out of cash at the same time. So from an investment period point of view, originally, and that's what we also could see on one of the slides at the beginning, the job journey, and when we raise capital, as like we did in 2022, then that's where we start off the ramp up. So there we hired a lot and we can see we went from, uh, I think, 87 to now we are 120. So it's almost 50% uh, on, on, on top that we have added of, uh, of resources. And we did that when we waste and then do it as fast. Then what we are looking at now, there will still be some additional hirings and investments, but what we have achieved this year is that we have uh, uh, increased our, for example, our product organization. Uh, so we are ready also to scale even more. So that has been a high priority. We have also scaled up our, our, our sales and marketing, but that was what we, what we used to have. 
and use the, say, the, the, the growth capital that we raised for. So it has been from the very beginning, it has been that initially hire more people. And then, so we have that upfront and then show the metrics on how we can show, uh, and then either become profitable or we can also, of course also have uh, other options uh, later on. But we are always that, then we have in our investment period that we have at the end of it that our ARR is above our cost base. Sure. And then turning to a completely different uh, subject, uh, could you shed some light on the competition and also briefly touch upon how, how you're going to make sure that you're going to win against uh, competitors in the long term? Yes. So uh, from a competition point of view, what we have been successful with so, uh, say so far and what we also expect to be successful with going forward is our focus on certain industries such as the auditing accounting. By really knowing their processes in and out and how we automate them, have a close relationship with them, integrate to their core system. That's where we really do a differentiation compared to other just have abroad. That has been from the very beginning our go-to-market strategy. And that's also how we differentiate ourselves by being this specialized solution for these kind of, uh, of, uh, of our core segments. <coughs> and that also that's good. So when we look at competition, yeah. Then we can narrow it down from, say, if you, for example, take the sign, yeah, then uh, in a general term, that's a long, then have it on that level uh, where we have the highest level of security, then in a specific segment specified for their, their, their processes, adding on our another product like the KYC, so we really get you know, say, even a, a, an enhanced solution uh, that they can take advantage of. That's how we are getting, you know, say, I, I have got competitive and also we stay competitive by further investment in that. Yeah, um, and then turning to, to, uh, back to another short term question. Um, obviously you have seen weak demand uh, in the past year or so, maybe a bit more. Um, could you shed some light on how much, much visibility you have going into the into next year without, you know, obviously uh, talking about guidance or anything? Do you see any signs of improvement or? So, so what we have seen, uh, so far, what we expected from the beginning of the year was that we had the cautious buying behavior that we experienced in last, it was a second half last year. It started off in Q3, and then we continued that. So we set, so set that up as an expectation. It would continue. That was our expectation, even though we hoped that that would change. Now it had turned out quarter by quarter that that had continued. And also here at the Q3 that had continued. So we have still achieved 27% year-on-year growth. So we have grown both on both product and both upsell and in new biz, despite mm -hmm. the fact, because one of the things that we have done is then we have increased the number of new customers. So it might be that it's cost of spying behavior. So some of them have you know, a smaller initial commitment, but then we have got more of them. So that balances yeah. out partly at least, you know, say that yeah. they are not as willing to buy it. Looking yeah, so ahead, that's... it's hard to see how much would, would that continue this course of buying? Is, it, is that just the new normal? Yeah, right now we don't see any signs, and that's what we also reported here in the Q3. We don't see any signs that, that would change. We can hope for it, but right now we believe this is the new normal until something else. At the same time, when we are also looking at our expansion plan, there are differences, for example, between the Nordic market and a market like Belgium or Germany and others where they are not as far with the digitalization. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of potential for the individual customers that they can gain. And you know, the bigger the potential, the better the savings, the, the more manual process they have, yeah, the, you know, the, the better you know, they will still do it, despite the fact of cautious buying behavior. Perfect. So that's what we experience, and you will see that in our numbers. Yeah, I think we have just time for one final quick question uh, before we wrap up. So if you are to, to uh, Give me three key risks to the long-term uh, case in Pinea. What would they be? Very brief. Or the two three or three, key whatever. Risk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right now we are in our expansion plan. We are depending on on uh, that the the, the the continued digitalization. We really believe that that will continue, but of course we are depending on that the market is as mature as we would like to be, and that's part of the government uh, that they do their regulation in the different European countries and. Adoption of electronic ID and adoption of you know say that for example on our KYC the 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 authorities should go out and make controls because that that is a big help. 
yeah. that controls of the companies that they actually do. You know, they, that we have, they have a red risk of if they don't do it. Then, of course, the, the, the general, as you see, the market, as it, you know, there was a big difference a year ago and a two years ago compared to now. Of course, there are some general market conditions that can be top of that. That is a risk uh, by itself. Uh, and also, of course, the whole financial market and other things. If the interest rates go even further up, of course, that can also have an impact. We hope it goes down at a certain point. But these are some of the key risks that we see. But we are very cautious in the way we are managing our our, our business. Like, so we, we are in control as much as possible of it. Yeah, perfect. And engaging the actions on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all we have time for, unfortunately. So uh, thank you very much for your time, Christian. And uh, yeah, for, to, to all of you, have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much for the opportunity.